Hello Raptors fans and welcome to Raptors Report. Today we'll be discussing the Raptors' sole draft pick in the 2022 draft, as well as a quick rundown of how I predict the Raptors will perform this coming season. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. With the shadow of Kevin Durant hanging over the entire offseason, it's been tough to talk about the future of the Toronto Raptors with any certainty. Last season was a pleasant surprise for the franchise, with the Raptors finishing 5th in the Eastern Conference, having a Raptor win Rookie of the Year for the first time since Vince Carter won the award back in 1999, and many other high points that I think pleased the majority of the Raptors fanbase. It would seem like an easy task to talk about all of the different storylines heading into next season, but with the runaway Durant rumor train derailing any sort of normal basketball conversations for a solid month, it was tough to talk about anything involving the Raptors' future. I'll take a calculated risk and make the assumption that Kevin Durant will either not be traded or be traded to a team not named the Toronto Raptors so that I can get on with my fricking life. A topic we'll be examining today is Christian Coloco, the Raptors' only draft selection at this year's draft, and the 33rd pick overall. Before we discuss Coloco, it should be noted that as of the creation of this video, Christian Coloco has not yet signed a contract with the Toronto Raptors. There were rumors that the Raptors want to ink Coloco to a deal more substantial than the usual ones given to second round picks, usually the league minimum or even two-way deals. Now, I can't confirm nor deny that, but it makes a bit of sense. Raptors general manager Bobby Webster implied that the Raptors draft board had Coloco rated highly, and said that he might have been selected by the club in the first round anyway. Christian Coloco is a large, traditional center, albeit one who has very interesting physical tools. One thing that excites scouts is his footwork, foot speed, and defensive instincts. The Raptors have a guy who matches that description already in Precious Achua, who has excellent foot speed and is able to stay in front of guards as well as good defensive processing. As I've mentioned before, the Raptors like to switch ball screens, and Coloco has the tools to be able to do that. What separates him from Precious is his size. Christian Coloco is a legit 7-footer with an impressive frame. There are a few players in this draft who have the physical tools Coloco does. He already looks the part of an NBA center. This makes a bit of sense, as Coloco is one of the older players in the draft at 22, although that might not be a big deal, as we will get to later. Coloco was voted the Defensive Player of the Year in the Pac-12 Conference this year, and it's easy to see why. The aforementioned foot speed and defensive processing helped him immensely in college, where he posted an impressive 2.8 blocks in only 25 minutes per game. And yeah, Coloco is friggin' huge. He has a 7 foot 5 wingspan and completely swallows up weak shot attempts, usually dwarfing the players he's rejecting. The defensive processing is a great sign as well. Coloco has a good understanding of how a play will develop and where he needs to be in order to contest shots, when he needs to leave his man to contain penetration, and other elements that give him a good chance of being a strong defender at the next level. So why the heck was this guy available at number 33? Well, there are two reasons. One that might simply be an illusion, and one thing that certainly is a red flag. The first reason is the age thing, which we briefly discussed earlier. Christian Coloco is a 22-year-old player who just finished his third year of college. Those numbers usually indicate that a player is closer to their ceiling than, say, a 19-year-old freshman, but there is a reason why the Raptors might be a bit more optimistic about Coloco's ceiling. If you didn't know, Christian Coloco is from Pascal Siakam's hometown of Douala, Cameroon. And like his countrymen, Coloco took up basketball pretty late in his teens. Like Siakam, Coloco was a soccer player, but transitioned to basketball at age 17 for obvious reasons. The Raptors follow the philosophy that age is only one element when it comes to determining a player's eventual ceiling. Two other important factors are work ethic and the amount of time a player has been playing. 
It paid big dividends when they selected Pascal Siakam, who has made major strides almost every single season he's been in the league. And there are a lot of similarities between the two, so doubling down does make sense. The other reason Coloco dropped to 33 is his offense. Coloco currently is very raw offensively. He lacks any go-to moves and requires the table to be set for him in order to contribute there. The post moves that he did show at Summer League were a little soft, fading away from the basket for leaning jumpers rather than using his large body to get shot attempts at the rim. He did show some competence in the pick and roll, in large part because, <laughs> well, he is large and sets a big screen. I think his rawness on offense will keep Christian Coloco bouncing between the 905 and the main team, which is not a bad thing. The Raptors 905 has been a large part of the Raptors development program, and I expect Raptors fans to see the fruits of this draft selection ripen a couple years down the road rather than immediately. The next segment of this video will be devoted to discussing where I think the Raptors will end up this coming season. Last year, I predicted that the Raptors would make the play-in tournament, and they managed to overachieve and capture the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. Along with last season's success, there are a lot of reasons to be very optimistic about the Raptors this season. The Raptors faced significant time miss due to injury during last year's regular season and playoffs, with Siakam, OG Ananobi, and Fred Van Vliet all sitting due to injury for portions of the season. With the various injuries having had some time to heal and no major surgeries to recover from, the Raptors are looking good on that front. Although the Raptors only added one surefire rotation player this offseason in Otto Porter Jr., it would be a bit naive to assume that the Raptors won't improve on last year's finish. The benefits of having a young roster is that internal growth and development is something that needs to be taken into account when evaluating a roster. How will Scotty Barnes, the reigning Rookie of the Year, look in his sophomore season? OG, Siakam, and Fred Van Vliet are all at the beginning of their prime years. Gary Trent Jr. is 23 years old, Precious Achua is 22. Essentially what I'm saying is that the core of the team is very young. Obviously, expecting all young players to take a big step forward is a little foolhardy, but the Raptors allocated tons of minutes to young, developing players last year and managed to secure the fifth seed in the East. So. It's not outlandish to assume that a young roster will collectively improve from one season to the next. And it's not like the Raptors were basement dwellers last season and are hoping for a miracle on that front. But obviously the roster does not exist in a vacuum. And there are other teams that you have to consider when predicting final seeding outcomes. When you look at the final seedings last season, with the Heat, Celtics, Bucks, and 76ers rounding out the top four, it's hard to pick a team that the Raptors could finish ahead of, as the Celtics have just come off a trip to the finals, the 76ers won't have to deal with the Simmons situation this year, and the Bucks are, on paper, one of the strongest teams in the league. The team that I could see falling out of that top four is ironically the team that had the best record of the bunch, the Miami Heat. Portions of their roster are old, they lost a key role player in P.J. Tucker to the 76ers, and they have a very expensive non-contributor in Duncan Robinson, who played limited minutes in last season's run to the conference finals. That said, Jimmy Butler is amazing, Bam Adebayo is one of the best defenders in the league, and Eric Spolstra is an excellent coach, alongside all of their very good shooters. So I don't feel like they're going to fall too far just that they might not be the top team in the East next season. The teams behind the Raptors that I think that they have to watch out for are the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Atlanta Hawks. The Cavs are in a similar position to the Raptors, with some young star veterans, the Rookie of the Year runner-up in Evan Mobley, and capable role players. The Hawks added a star guard in DeJounte Murray, who, despite seeming to be completely nuts, is a very strong pairing with Trey Young in the backcourt, and like the Cavs, have a good complement of role players like Clint Capella and Bogdan Bogdanovich. If things work out the way that I think that they will, I think that the Raptors will be a better team than last year. But oddly enough, I don't know if you can immediately pencil them into the top four of the Eastern Conference. I think that the realistic range for the Raptors next season is somewhere between 4th and 6th in the East. 
with a decent chance to finish higher or lower depending on injuries and development curves. And that's this week's episode of Raptors Report. What do you think about Christian Coloco? Do you agree with my analysis on him? Where do you foresee the Raptors finishing next season? Let me know here in the comments as well as on Twitter, where you can find me at Raps Report. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more Raptors and NBA content. And as always, thanks for tuning in to Raptors Report, your source for in-depth Raptors content.